Warning. Serious injury can result from experimentation with HHO or Brown's gas. Children should not attempt anything shown on this channel without close adult supervision. Even some big kids. Please, play it safe. Okay, we're almost to the fun part where we start assembling plates inside the tubes, but first thing I want to go over is the assembly of the two inside positive plates. In this photograph right here, you're going to see that I have the studs that protrude out the back of each of the energized plates going through a strap of very thick stainless steel. This is a 0 .048, 48 thousandths of an inch thick stainless steel. It should conduct very well. And it is two and three quarter inches long here. If you'll notice on the edge of the T, I have drawn a couple of lines with my Sharpie, one here and one here. This is how far the section of three inch pipe that was inserted into the T extends and it ends right there inside the pipe. I want my plates to sit five sixteenths of an inch beyond each end of the pipe because there's going to be one last shim in here that acts as a backing plate for the stainless steel plate. So inside the cell we're going to have a shim right here and the cell plate will sit right up against it like so and another one on the opposite side. And I think that's a pretty good shot. The trick is I want one of these rings behind each plate, like so, inside the cell. All right, Easier said than done. What I need to do is I need to disassemble one plate from the U-bracket, because both plates have to assemble coming from the outside into the T. And then the last mechanical uh, assembly or the last mechanical junction is one of these bolts. At Harbor Freight I picked up a little ratchet, it's a quarter inch ratchet tool and it doesn't have any clicks in it, it's a smooth ratchet. With this I found that I can get inside the small two inch opening and onto the nut that's going to allow me to make that final, that final uh, mechanical assembly inside. The positive voltage is fed through this vertical strap that comes down to the center of the U-strap that joins the two plates. When I'm assembling this, I'll just fold it down as I insert it into the tubes. Remember, this plate won't be here when I insert it into the tubes. In fact, I'm going to take it off right now. I've already adjusted the backing nuts to the depth that I think I need it to be. Okay, so I'm taking this off the U, folding that down, and now I can insert this assembly into the tube opening. Flip the vertical bar up, and give you a look inside at what that looks like. Fortunately, lighting is a little tough here. Maybe I'll give you another shot of that in a minute. And that's what it looks like from the open end before I assemble the last plate. So the last plate will go in and then I'll put the nut on the back of it and tighten it through the two inch opening here. Pretty tricky assembly. Um, the other thing you have to remember is that the, the plates will have an orientation, a vertical orientation, for the gas outlet and the electrolyte flow underneath. I would like to point out that uh, 
I have decided to create the channels underneath and on top of the circular disc plates. I've decided not to modify the plates too much. What I am going to do is on the top and on the bottom of each plate is I'm just going to create a, a flat area a little bit. Just flatten it out just slightly so that the gap is a little bit larger than meeting right flush with the edge of the inside of the tube. All right, and the reason for that is so that when I apply the adhesive, it will go around the bait on underneath it. But the actual channel is going to be cut into the PVC plastic on the inside with my Dremel tool. Uh, I have a little milling bit right here that comes with the Dremel tool. Pretty good shot of it right there and I was playing around with a scrap piece and I found I was able to create a channel very easily down inside here and very even. What I'm going to do is after I've created the channel and when I apply the adhesive I'm going to lay a piece of copper wire 12 gauge copper wire in the channel opening and allow the adhesive to cure. Once the adhesive has cured I should be able to grab this with a pair of pliers and pull it back through and that will create the channel underneath uh, in between all of the plates. So That's the plan. We'll see how well that works. Now if I did my job right, I should be able to lay this piece of 12 gauge copper wire in the channel that I've cut at the bottom of the tube and then put a plate in on top of that. So let's see how well that works out. Oh, look at that. Very nice. Okay. So it looks like we have a plan here. All right. There is a very good look. And how that came out. I'm going to take my copper wire and I'm going to slide it underneath. Make sure it goes under. And it does. All right, on the grinding wheel, you can see I've created a couple of small flats above and below. Those will line up with the channels inside the T inverted T-cell. I'm going to give this a quick test fit. And that actually looks really, really good. So the next ring will sandwich this plate to the to the one that's behind it, and then the next plate will go on top of that of that next C ring. <laughs> 